Ventures and welcome to our pit. Here we like to discover new things and explore. So today I'll design a bridge using tween curves command. But before doing that, so before doing that, I would like to briefly tap the realm of bridge design history such that we can get some perspective before moving deep into this curiosity. If we talk about the history of bridge design, the first bridges were very natural. And uh, the first man-made bridge were tree trunks laid across streams in girder fashion. The builders derived various combinations such as the truss, cantilever, cable, stayed, tied arch and different types of bridge like we see today, uh, like the marvelous te technology and engineering which has been do done today. So the bridges mainly are affected by the type of material which is used to construct them because they span a large distance. So Chinese built big bridges of wooden construction and later stone bridges. The ancient Romans were the greatest br uh, bridge builders of antiquity. And as we can see from their aqueducts to their bridge constructions, how they use, they developed basically the arc, arc weighted structural system. So they basically used pozzolana, which was water, lime, sand and volcanic rock. And uh, it reduced the variation of strength found in natural stone and it was used as their material, main material. And it was versatile, but the revolution came when iron took its place. We enter the age of iron. Now in this age, because of the materiality and the development of in technology and how structures can be made lightweight. In 1779, we started to see some huge influences in the steel construction like the arched bridges which we see now. So at that time, uh, Iron Master Abraham Darby uh, built an arch bridge over the George of River Severn at Colebrook Dale. So uh, then a major center of the English iron and coal industries. Uh, this elegant structure still remains a testimony to its maker's understanding of the material and the first important example in the world of structural use of cast iron. After introduction of iron, uh, the possibilities were uh, uh, the possibilities open. Uh, like when the early iron engineering took place after such a marvel, there were many different uh, inventions and there are there were many iterations of these bridges which took place at that time so with the industrial revolution steel which has a high tensile strength replaced wrought iron from the construction of larger bridge to support larger loads and later welded structural bridges of various designs were constructed and uh, bridges are classified as beam bridge cantilever bridge arc bridge suspension bridge cable state bridge and truss bridge because of the invention of steel and because of the flexibility of design we can really play with uh, different designs and create something which is very interesting uh, so i would like to prepare a bridge which is a simple uh, pedestrian bridge and uh, create something interesting using uh, the parametric tools so let's jump into the rhino interface so this is my Rhino environment currently. So I'll start by simply making a polyline, uh, which is giving us uh, the exact width and length of our bridge. I'll start from 0, 0, and uh, take my length to be around 18 meters. Yeah, this looks way beyond. So this will be the length of my bridge. Now, if I talk about the width, uh, appropriately, it can vary from eight feet, eight feet to any width which I like. Now, for this uh, for this design, I think around uh, four point five meters would be a good option. So I'll just do that, four point five. Then again, uh, so this is the rectangle or the bridge which I'll be proposing. This is the surface over which. I would like to make something so I'll take the surface and start designing so firstly I'll open my grasshopper environment yeah so place this over here and this over here for 
visibility purpose so now i'll firstly start by defining what i want i think the best start can be if i'll make a geometry tween it and uh, it is also rotating at the same time creating an interesting geometrical pattern which then i'll loft together and that will give me the kind of a geometry of a bridge now even uh, this path doesn't need to be very straight it can be curvy so i'll firstly start with a rectangle so for this rectangle i need a plane this plane as this is situated in x and y plane i'll take y and z plane this is the y and z plane though it is not visible it is taking this plane so the curves will be formed in this area which i require now if i talk about the size i'll take 1 is to 1 for now so the width is of 6 meters so i'll take my panel to be around 6 thousand for this x and y plane so now i have a rectangle i'll just make it for 4500 yeah so this is my rectangle and this is my bridge so this is my initial rectangle what i can do is I can firstly make an interesting kind of geometry using this rectangle. We can play with some mesh designs. For example, if we go in this mesh tab in the triangulation area, we can find Delaunay mesh. We can even use Voronoi, and we can play with these subdivided. For now, for the simple part. I'll just use a Delaunay mesh. So this is my rectangle. What I can do for creating this kind of mesh is to populate it, populate the points. So I'll populate 2D, make more points in this region. So the count looks a lot. I'll just reduce the count number, ranging it from 10 to 20. so that looks to be decent and uh, this looks decent now now if i talk about the delaunay mesh it requires points and a plane so this will be the point for this mesh if i talk about the plane it will be this rectangle so now i have fed it the point and plane dimension and it has resulted into this interesting mesh now uh, what we can do is extract uh, extract the edges we don't need all the lines which are coming in the middle so what we can do is go in the mesh in analysis we can choose mesh edges so that extracts the edges of this mesh from the naked edges to interior edges so if i choose my curves i can take out the naked edges and just leave everything else so this is the curve this is basically a kind of geometry which i think i think will work for the kind of bridge which i am trying to design so this is that curve and now i can close this curve let me read the data first okay So I'll join the curves together. Now, if I read this data, it's it should be a simple polygon curve. Yes. I think, I think at this stage we can play with the kind of bridge which we like to design. So rather than taking it straight or fixed like this, I think we can play with its design, make something very interesting. So I'll start with the points. make a serpentine type of bridge i think that will be very interesting take it a little bit artistic way so i won't be going through particular dimensionings 
so now i have this initial curve which is which is the starting geometry or the opening of my bridge and this is the flow of that bridge rather than taking it straight i was thinking to make it interesting or serpentine or something like that i need similar kind of curve at the other end of this of this particular curve so i'll extract the end points first so this is the curve so before doing that i'll take the centroid and move this curve to the center of my opening so <coughs> to move this geometry to centroid yeah so now this curve is in the center i'm just fixing the flow a little, little bit to make it interesting yeah so i would like to name it because this will be used again so i'll just name this as the opening opening curve for my bridge and now this is the flow of bridge so i'll just name it the flow because uh, this is how i'm trying to move these are the two points instead of this i'll take this geometry now because uh, here this is the place where i want my second curve to be so i'll just copy this entire thing place it here uh, this is my end point i think i need my end point for it yeah so i'll bring my end point over here and then i'll connect it with the origin so it gives me the second curve so what is happening uh, as soon as i click this was if i'll just turn the preview on again uh, this is my point this is this is the origin and uh, if i'll start with a point and just give x and y it, it won't come from it won't take it as a centroid but it will take it as a corner point and just start making a rectangle so the best way is to con is to construct a domain for it and uh, tell it that this range of x and y needs to be from negative some dimension to positive one so i'll just construct that domain the values would be same the only difference being the expression of this might be negative x and the domains would be same so this has made that rectangle this geometry come in the center of it uh, so this is how this looks something interesting i think uh, this is one curve this is another one and uh, this is making an interesting flow if we twin it there will be different curves which are coming i think uh, so if we talk about the parameters for changing it the one most important uh, parameter is of course the size of this rectangle so if, if we label the, these under parameters which we can change for creating multiple iterations these are our main parameters so basically this panel will change the size of our opening so opening size if we talk about this panel i'll just increase its size a little bit to make it more visible if we talk about this panel this is based entirely on the exit so this will be the exit size I think we should add one more parameter regarding the rotation uh, so that it creates an important thing but before doing that uh, I'll just twin the curves together and see what kind of geometry is coming out of it so I'll twin this might be uh, this I have not labeled I'll label it now this is my exit curve yes now these are the main two curves which i'll be using and this will be the, uh, and this curve is the flow through which i'm moving that will be this curve 
so i'll again hide this curve internalize the data that is more important so that even if i delete it there is this curve okay. so i'll hide it this is my main geometry i don't need this anymore i don't need this anymore yeah so this is my curve or the flow i'll keep it here now if i go through the puffer fish extension in grasshopper in the curve section there might be tween through curves along curve not this one tween through consecutive curves along curve tween two curves along curve yeah so i'll be using tween two curves along a curve because this these are the two curves and i want to tween them together using this uh, as my main flow so this is the opening curve this will be my first curve the second one then i'll take the flow as my guide so as you can see by default the factor is of 0.5 so it will just give the mid curve a middle curve so the best way of moving forward with that is to make a range so that i can get a factor of more than one curve by default it is 10 so to be honest this looks quite interesting as the main structure of my bridge now i think it will be it will be looking more appropriate once i have increased the initial size or the opening size as well from 45 i'll just make it to 6000 i think that will work yeah this looks relatively better yes so again i can add more curves in between divide this original curve into more points add more curves and then tween between many different intersections and play with the geometry so it will be uh, moving uh, getting bigger then getting smaller so i can do all those things but for this tutorial i am just sticking to this flow of uh, increment in the size uh, from opening to exit so it will uh, actually create a kind of interesting geometry so these are those curves and now i what i would like to do is i think this exit curve i can rotate it a little bit so that the geometry also rotates and makes uh, this into a very interesting kind of geometry so what i'll do is rotate this geometry so i'll set my plane to this now as you can see it is rotating that geometry i think range can be from 15 45 i think this is a suitable range for my angle so currently it is 15 i think this is looking nice so again this will be a major parameter of angle which will affect the geometry a lot so i can add this to this group so these are the main parameters now this will be the rotation which will again define how the this geometry will look so i think i don't need this exit curve to be displayed i just need this this will be my main geometry for this curve so i'll just input the second curve to this as you can see the geometry has been affected personally i think it will be well explanatory once i'm done with the meaning part so instead of this this will be my exit curve so this looks nice this looks nice i'll just hide them as well so 
these are the curves which are defining the structure of my bridge now if i lock them together this is that geometry this is the geometry of the bridge which is coming out and i think this is looking interesting if i talk about the flow i can again offset this curve this is my main curve i'll offset it to a distance of of around 4500 i think and again i can construct my domain or the simpler thing can be just adding a negative dimensioning to it so it will offset in these two directions the curve i think i can increase it a little bit yeah so this can be that offset then if i talk about the plane i'll just demonstrate this part uh, you'll get to see the end product of the bridge in the graphic but i'll just i won't be showing these stages these steps in this video uh, so this is the kind of geometry which i would like to create uh, for my bridge So guys this is the final form which we were waiting for this is how this is how that bridge will look once it is completed and i think the geometry looks pretty interesting and i'll show it in a better way so yeah this bridge looks something like this with its entrance part or oh, this might be the exit Uh, it can be anything, but uh, one one end is something similar to a trabeated form, making a rectangular shape. And as we move towards the exit, it forms into a triangular form. Uh, so triangular exit or entrance, and then it narrows down to this interesting rectangular form. So I really like this kind of geometry, and uh, this can be explored further to create something really interesting. So. this is how it looks like the bridge the pedestrian bridge so yeah this is how it will look it looks really interesting in anyway. it so i'll also add few human figures and see how it looks I think I got my thumbnail for the video as well. So after adding human figures, I think this looks pretty interesting. So guys, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also press that bell icon next to it to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Also comment suggestion of topics or express your thoughts. How was your feeling when you watched this video? Was it helpful for your creative process? And catch you guys soon in the next video. Take care.